So, cool. I'm looking sweet. I know. <laughs> I ain't even mean to wear this for real. Give me a check on this mic right here. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Give me a check on this mic right here. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Oh, yeah, you good. Let's go. DTLR Radio, your fashion, your lifestyle, your music, you're plugged in with Fat and Got the Juice, live from the Unruly Spray Ground Studio on a good, good, good feeling Wednesday afternoon, yes. And I got a special surprise guest in the building with me today by way of the DMV. Um, I believe from the VA to be exact, right? Yes, sir. Excuse right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew that. I knew that part. See, Rick ain't even had to tell me. That's how far I go back in this culture we call hip hop. That's how far. That's how long I've been around. Just a fan of just just, just what we do here, man. Black Cobain is in the building, man. Yeah. Cole Busy, what's poppin'? What's up, Brody? How's life? Life is great right now. You know what I'm saying? I just dropped my new tape, everything for sale, my new album. It's only on Even Biz, so you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling like Master P right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> on his own platform, he said, guess what? We're not going to Apple. We're not going to Spotify. We're not doing none of that. Nah. It's only on my platform. And what's the name of it again? It's called Even Biz. Even Biz. E- e- even Biz. E- even mm-hmm. and business. Like okay, biz. Even Biz. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like biz. that. Now... What made you go that route? Um, I just wanted to test the waters and see uh, where my r- real true fan- fans was. Uh, you know, you don't really make no money off streaming and stuff like that. That's, which People is crazy. just in the grand scheme of, of how it looked. Oh, I'm on here with Drake and mm-hmm. all this, but you don't really make no money off of it. So we try to make some money this time around, you know what I'm saying? So going through it through, through, through even biz, do you make more money? Like, how does that business side work? You make work? your money directly. I can see my my how much money I'm making through every album sale right now, and then they'll tell you how much that is equivalent to streams. So right now, looking at my album sales, uh, it said, I ain't going to disclose how many albums we sold right now mm-hmm. or what we got, but it said to make the money that I have sitting at an account, I would have to have like 278,000 streams. Okay. And that's a lot of streams. It so, is. And, and it, ain't, it ain't that much money. You know what I'm saying? So it just don't be evening out. And when you go this way, I'm doing a proud to pay campaign. So people could pay $10. They could pay 20 They could pay 30 They could pay 50 Different tiers. They pay 30 They get some of my merch sucker free. I send them something. They pay 50 They can get on a one, one-on-one FaceTime call when we talk about the album. Okay. Stuff like that. So, yeah, we offering little perks with it. Oh, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. That's smart, man. Um, I thought it was dope to see you still out here still doing your thing, man. Um, I remember back in the days, back in the BOA days, and all that, like all, all that. So it was dope. Uh, shout out to my guy Seth. I see y'all got the, you know, the the the, the, the project out yes, right sir. now. Yes, sir. Man. You know, uh, talk to me about how, how you and Seth get together. Uh, uh, through Reek, actually. You know what I'm saying? Um, I knew I knew about Seth, and and I heard about him, and he was DJing, but I didn't actually meet him until I moved back from Los Angeles. And then when uh when we met, we just hit it off like we both was in the music we like music and we would just be talking about music and that's the way to to get my juices flowing you know what i'm saying pause on top of uh like going in the studio and things like that so my man is like a musical mind and i like you know people who think outside the box musically set don't play when it comes to his music nah, man for sure shout, shout out to set five set five really don't play when it comes to that music now we, we gonna go back a little bit just for the the people that don't know the, the full black Cobain history. Yep. W- where did you come from? Like, how did you get into this game? Um, I got into this space because um, I come from Alexandria, VA, but I grew up all around the DMV. My father from Southeast DC, my grandmother from Southeast, my aunties and them from PG. I'm the only one who kind of like grew up out in Maryland. Mm-hmm. I mean, out Virginia. I'm the only one who kind of grew up out of Virginia and went to school in Virginia. So I like all holidays, I was always in DC or Maryland. So. Mm. I'm, I've got that fabric and that cloth of just being in D.C., Maryland, mm-hmm. and Virginia. Before, it was a DMV thing. Before, we, it was a DMV it thing. It was just the metropolitan area. You know what I'm saying? So, I grew up in that. And um, I um, was just making mixtapes for my hood and where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? I'm in VA, and I went to school at Virginia State. And me okay, V State? Yeah, me and LeGreg was real close. Cr- Real okay. close. So uh, he always pushed me to do music. And when he went to New York, I was kind of traveling to New York and we used to bump into each other. And I was with a group. He'd be like, man, you need to go solo. He was kept pressing this solo <laughs> thing. This solo, man, you need to do this. You need to do that. Then I actually did it. 
and it kind of turned up in my hood a little bit and then from there he introduced me to everybody mo reek and then they start running with wale and then phew, we was out of there hey man yeah. the good old boa days yeah, man sure. like i remember watching from afar and i was like man them guys got something going over there man it felt like rockefeller bro man <laughs> I, I said them guys got something going over there it just, really felt like rockefeller. just watching from afar just just as a, as a music fan I thought it was dope, um, just everything that was happening. You know, I, I saw it, and the music was sounding good, because back in them days when, when you came in, um, in the, the BOA days and, and even the, the Wale days, that's when, like, you really had to rap. Yeah, you had to rap. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, was, yeah. it was a lot more. You had We had party music, you know what I mean? But, like, and the, and the trap music was coming up a little bit. I felt like even the, the trap rappers, I felt like everybody took pride in rap. Back yeah, they in did. The, in the blog era, yeah. like everybody kind of took pride in what they was doing. I felt, I was just talking to somebody about that, like, uh, I think I was listening to like Bedrock and like, she got that lovey dub. All that. It was an era where like niggas just got lazy. Yeah. Or people just rappers just got lazy and like they just wanted to like party and dance and then it just kind of got stuck there. Yeah. But I feel like it's going back to rap and uh. You do. I feel like it is a little bit more. I feel like you got people like Benny the Butchers and Conways and that's uh, true. And then you got Freddie Gibbs. You got Currency. You that's got true. Dom Kennedy. You got Larry June. These guys are just rap. They don't have to make no hit record. They just make a rap album, and they push it and they sell merch and then they go tour and then they repeat. That's true. I I, I can dig that, but it's not the it's not our main source. It's of not music, our main. Though. It's not our main source. Like like that's what I I, I miss. I do miss them days. Even me being on on the business side of it yeah. now, and I get like I get some of the other artists, you know what I mean, and some of the music they making. But yo, I do miss the days with like for sure. Yo, you was out here looking for the spitters, and and, and it was more balanced too because it was you, way more balanced. You used to hear common and most deaf and all these people on the radio on top of a, a laffy taffy or something or whatever. Yeah, else you did. You had, did. They had going on you down did. there, but now I just feel like they just trying to make it all like. Real mm -hmm. unchy, like all the music unchy. Like the females gotta talk about, you know, yeah, that's real. their bodies and stuff, and that's the dudes real. gotta talk about killing and spinning and link. Like they, like the people's like Kendrick and J Cole's and them, they real special. And mm -hmm. uh, cause they figured it out somehow. They, they figured it out. They figured, and that's a they hard, don't even have to play that game. It's a hard cold to crack. <laughs> yeah. It's a real hard cold to crack. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to them for figuring that out. I always tell people on the low. Um, this might be the first time I'm publicly saying this. I might get killed for saying this too. I always feel like the South killed hip hop. Like, for all the credit Atlanta get and the love they get, when they went so party heavy records, yeah. D4L and all that Laffy yeah. Taffy, and then Lil John the Eastside Boys, like, and it was working. And it was selling a lot of records. That's when it was like, oh, you don't even really have to have skill to do this anymore. I feel like, I feel like, I mean, you can't say that because I feel like every culture of music has they like party type of music. Like, you know what I'm saying? You go to DC, you're gonna hear go go. They're gonna make you move, they're gonna make you bounce. You go to New Orleans, they got that New Orleans bounce. They wanna make you dance and feel good. It ain't really about like what nobody's saying or nothing like that. So I feel like they didn't like ruin it because you still had spitters down there. Like you still had You still had you still Outcast, had, like, you still Outcast, had TI. You still had T I you still had Jeezy's. It was people who was cutting through that, but like you know the, the I feel like the, they had more of of the party. I feel like I feel like that be the labels. That's true. That be the labels you got who that. be kind of like you got pushing that. it and and making it the mainstream thing because it's a quick money grab. I I give you that. Yeah yeah yeah. Like but, I mean like like Yin Yang Twins. Did we really need Yin Yang Twins? Man, and you know what's so crazy? I just <laughs> went to a Yin Yang Twins show. Like they were still are they still can go out and do those. Like you you get a set with DJ Paul, uh, Yin Yang Twins, Three Six Mafia, E Forty. I like a shows like that. Oh, and they be killing it. The old school hip hop shows are making a killing right now. Old school hip hop shows are making a killing. Um, it is quite frankly the craziest thing. I, my man shoot for Ja Rule. And when I tell you, they're on the oh, road man. all the time. Man, Ja Rule and Ashanti sold out the the St. James mm. on New Year's Eve in Virginia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In Springfield. Yeah. Come on, yeah. bro. In a gym, like they got a big grass field, bro. That joint was just full with people. It's just like, bro. My man, my man is a shooter. Make another song again. Yo, my man is a shooter. It's crazy. My man <laughs> was a shooter. My man is a shooter, and he was a big fan of him. And um, he saw he he came here on tour 
a few years back, and he was like, yo, can y'all get me a media pass? So I think Flex had got him a media pass, and then Flex was like, yo, next time I'm, I'm going you know, to link you up with him and all yeah. that. He did all that for him, and then one day he saw like a flyer he posted or something. And he was like, yeah, I thought the flyer he posted was whack, so I just redid the flyer. And then, like, he put, like, some pictures and some visuals behind it. And Ja hit him, like, hey, yo, like, I, I need to book you for some stuff. And after that, he booked him. And then it was like, yo, I need to book you for more. And after that, it was like, yo, I just need you forever. That's crazy. Yeah, like, he, and he used bro. to work here with us. But that's that the that six the six degrees of separation is so easy for everybody. That's why if you really believe in what you're doing, like that's you, true. When you get to put it up to the world, bro, you don't know who gonna see it. That's, so like, yeah, that's true. That's crazy. That's a that's a great opportunity, man. Bro. When I say a great opportunity, and just to watch it, you know what I'm saying. And for me, I'm looking like I never seen Ja Rule as much, but man, like they don't stop. They don't like, stop, bro. I just watched them do four cities in five days. Come on, bro. Last week, and it's just like, and and, and my man. Like quit his job, like he don't work here no more. That's lovely. You know what I'm saying? Like he <laughs> and you just out with with ja Rule all the time, just and he looked like he's having the time of his of life. Of course he is. You know what I'm saying? On like on the internet, it seemed like you know ja Rule be the bid all the time, but this man is never stopped doing shows. No, at selling all. Selling out arenas, like city to and, city. And mind you, like when I say this is my man, so like I talk to him from time to time, and he he just happy. Happy. Happy at peace. Like he'd tell me like, man, you would have loved this. Hey man, fly me out, pause. Nah, you know what real. I mean? Hey, I'm coming next time. Nah, for real. But nah, that, that's that's hard. But I I just miss them days. Cause I mean, like even with the R&B, right? And I'm gonna say something else that's crazy. I I feel like Drake kind of killed R&B as we know it, because once he fully exposed, yo, you don't really have to know how to sing yeah. to do R&B. It that, was a rap. That everybody singing. It was a rap. Yeah, nobody even really make like R and B music no more. It's kind of like nope. R and rap. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's it rhythm just, and it, rap. It's, yo, it's, it's it's talk soul. It's the Chris, yeah, it's the Chris Brown rap sing hey, to yo, you type. Which is crazy. Like I mean, and mind you, like this when Drake was doing records with Trey songs, Trey was singing, and Drake like, nah, I got you. Watch this. Exactly. And then just say, I'm not gonna sing. And now you get these R and B parties. They all, now the only thing they play is old school R&B. Old school R&B because it's a time that we can't get back. <laughs> can't Nobody get back. can re recreate it. Nobody's even trying to really make R&B like that. Them R&B parties, they, it's a playlist. I, I swear, it's a hundred songs they play at all these R&B parties. It's a hundred songs. That's it. They don't even play no new. Cause Coco Jones is out here doing her thing. She's killing it. She's killing. And her songs are catching too. Yeah, they catch her. Her money catching. long. So we we, yeah. we got a few. Yeah, her songs catching. We, we got a few songstress out here that's. That's really trying to still. Yeah, you she, know she she stand true to her R and B sound. I miss Miguel too, man. I don't know oh Miguel, man, I don't know where Miguel went, but Miguel man, lost his mind when album, bro. when he hung himself with the nails and all that. He kind of he he kind of went kind of off the deep end. Hopefully he'll come back. Yeah, we um, need that R and B, man. We do need that R and B. Now you was in L A for a while. How long you stayed out there? I lived in L A for like seven and a half years. For real? How was it? Um, it was rocky at first, but then I, I got on my feet and then I got to enjoy the real culture and, uh, you know, kind of touch base with like some real L.A. natives, bro. And I learned a lot out there and uh, I moved around well and, and handled myself accordingly. I thought about making an L.A. jump. Um, I don't have a talent like you to feel comfortable enough to sustain being in L.A. and I'm terrified of Skid Row. I've driven. Oh, I, I drive by Skid Row every time. Because you know, once you don't make it, that's where you end up. <laughs> that's where you end up. There is some talented people on Skid Row, Not man. For real. So every time I'm out there, I drive through Skid Row just to remind myself of you want to live out here, but you might end up here. Man, listen, that's that's a reality because man, I got a man. I could tell you a story about somebody that I know who was up, up, up. I'm talking about living in Hollywood, Tesla, watch, grill, all that, and. I'm like two years removed, three years removed from LA right now. He's homeless. Dang. And this was my man. I'm talking about I used to be with this dude. Now, like, is he homeless like Skid Row or he homeless like couch surfing? Man. Because it's a different he kind down, of homeless. He down bad, bro. He down bad? He down bad. And he looked bad, too. That's what's throwing me. It's like LA, like I, I, I heard the stories. Yeah, but you never saw it. I, I never seen it until now, bro. And... That shit is scary. So is he on the ground? 
He on the gram. I show you. That's after. crazy. I show you. Nah, so I, I, and I'm only asking. And I don't even think he been posting lately. Like, all right, I, cool. He went ghost. Cool. All right, cool. But like when he was, he was posting like some weird stuff, bro. And it was just like damn. he was crying. He was crying for help. Yeah, he was and crying no, for help. Yeah, nobody was helping. And nobody said. And then we just in a town where everybody prideful. So man, you know, I, I DM'd him and I was like, bro, you good? He didn't respond. Cause that it's 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 crazy to see, bro. You see a, a dude like having his way, like living in California, like going to the gym, healthy, like drinking green juice and all that, and then you down bad and you on drugs and you strung out. Like LA really whooped your ass. Dang, that's terrible. Yeah, and I've been down. I I've been down bad in LA before. Like I ain't always have a crib out there and all that. Like I had to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And stay down and For figure sure. it out. But like. I, I couldn't picture me being yeah, like that. I always wonder about how many real friends I have out there. Um, and if I crash down bad out there, would I be able to crash on somebody's couch for, you know, six months or something like that? At the time we went to L.A., it was a lot of people from this area going out there. It was like a flood. So the crazy thing is uh, the flood just came back. It must be a tidal oh, for wave. Sure. For sure. It's a bunch of them out there now. Uh, they got a whole DMV community. For sure. Yo, it's so crazy out there. DJ Social went out there and became a DJ. Yeah. How crazy is that? Because he, and that's my man, he wasn't like a DJ DJ home. He out there, he's the man out there. You know what? L.A. is a place where you can go and create yourself. Uh, And you can meet a lot of people. And, like, if you can talk right and, like, believe in yourself and, like, have a look out there, you can be be somebody. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep yourself up, maintain and be able to sh- move and shake in them rooms, bro, your life could change in two days out there, motherfucker. <laughs> Man, I might need to take that trip out there. I, like, I might need to go out there, like, get a one-way need, ticket. You need, like, a week out there. Like, if you're going to fly across the country, you need, like, five to seven days. So that's the thing, really though. I, I, the I've, done the, I, I've done the five, seven days, but whenever I go out there, I'm always working. Yeah. So I'm always out there working, so I don't never get to be out you there. With, you don't get no downtime. Yeah, it's, n- it's never time out there where it's when not. When you be working. going out there like BT Awards yeah, and stuff like BT, that? Yeah, BT, Grammys. Um, who else had me out there? I so yeah, there something y'all else. be working all day, and then by the time it's time to really like move, y'all dead tired. Yeah, so <laughs> every year BT, I'm out there for a week, so like I get there probably a day too early, and then like at the, the, the awards, I take meetings like Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And then fly out, but I don't never really. But you don't never follow up and stay because yeah. some can. Yeah, right. I don't never meetings. Never yeah. follow up and stay. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. This last time I was there for uh, Grammys, I wanted to stay longer because I went to Dumbo House for the first time, and uh, Soho House and Dumb Man, and the Soho Joint. That, that's off the, uh, the PCH, right? So they got one there, but it's also so they got three uh, Soho houses in LA. Okay. I went to the one downtown. All right, all right, all right. So. That was the first time I've been in there, but I'm in there with everybody, and I'm like, I, like I was addicted to going there. That was the first time I ever been to Soul House, and, and it's so crazy because you do, you, like you say, everybody was in there. It's just like, bro, like it's prominent people here in the DMV, but like, just one night I went to Delilah, bro, and I just like bumped into Scotty Pippen and Odell Beckham. Oh yeah, that's wild. It's wild, That's bro. wild. It's just like, bro, like, Scotty Pippen? Like, yeah. what's up, bro? What hey, yo, l- listen, <laughs> first, look, first time in Soho House, Grammy weekend, I think it was that Thursday or Friday night I'm out there. It was Friday. Going there, Mark Pitts is in there just chilling. Just chilling. And then just so happened I saw my man, Tariq, he and A&R over there. Tariq came on to me, oh, man, you made the trip. Man, let me introduce you to Big, big Homie. Like, that's my mentor. That's my big... He introduced me to him and... It was a rap after that, and I'm like, yeah. man, this it, is crazy. It'd it, it be hard to run into. It'd be hard to run in them type of circles. Oh, you're not running them type of circles in DMV. New York like that too. Yeah, New York like that. You yeah, but run they, around New York. Then DMV, you can't so even. Run, it's hard to run into me in the DMV because guess what? I, I don't I, even come outside like I, that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Everybody kind of like stand to themselves. Yeah, but I, we still, um, we still new on the entertainment side. We are, things. and also, man. So one of the reasons I kind of like stay in the house for the most part is like I know what my name is now like I, I know what my value is I know I can't help everybody though so when you come across these guys in person everybody wants to interview Fast. and I can't water down my platform sitting everybody in that seat no, you can't you know what I mean it just don't even make sense yeah. for me somebody out there can do it just not just me not I'm not the guy for yeah. that you know what I'm saying cause like 
I want the right people. I want the right people that got history. Like, but when Rick hit me, like, yo, I need you to interview black. Yo, it was a, it was a no brainer, no problem, because. I know who Black Cobain is. You know what I'm saying? I know how long Black been around doing his thing, Put been spitting. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yo, that's the no brand, no problem. Like, come up this day and time, bet. But everybody else, half of them, I never heard their music before. Nah, it's hard out here, man. And uh, a lot of them don't be having a foundation. Like, when we was coming up, we had to go and do open mics and stand behind the rapper who say he better than you and act like you like his rap uh -huh. and wait for eight more rappers to rap and then have your turn then put a mixtape out then go hit the streets then go like you had to like fight through so much now it's just like they could just say they want rap shoot a YouTube video no, it's, the cra yo, it's the craziest thing like I, <laughs> I hate getting caught in some of them spots and they like oh yeah and y'all follow you on the gram and it's like dang you got me you don't follow me back though all right, I got, what's your name? I got, I'm going to follow you right now. Then I really got to go do it. Then you see they gram, they got two pictures with some money. Dog, regardless <laughs> of what they, for me, it'd be like most of the time, regardless of what they got, I just, I'm not interested. Because it's like once I go through like two or three videos, I'm like, yeah, the same it's, stuff. it's not there yet, right? So then you get to the point where it's like, I, yo, I'm trying to come up and get an interview. And then it say you grind the interview. Now it's like, hey, next time you go to one of them labels, I'm trying to come. Hey, next tour you do, Facts. I'm trying to get on. Like, it, yo, they it, think you can walk them through each door. Yo, it's just like, it just nah, don't bro. stop. No, nah. hey, hey, can you be my manager? Like, yo, if you follow me, <laughs> I know you see I got my own stuff going on. How can I manage you? I'm trying to manage myself. Nah, for real. Like, I need a real manager. Slim, can you find somebody that can help us? Nah, for like, real. Please, Slim. Like, nah, these youngers be having expectations through the roof. Too many of them. Too many of them. Now tell me something. Um, you, you're a seasoned guy. You've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. well, yo, what what happened with BOA? You, you ain't gotta give me the, the uh, w w w from your eyes. Um, BOA just like it's like being on a basketball team, like who signed the big three and they promised they're gonna win a ring and it just didn't work. That's that's it, bro. It's like you got all these people on a team. And then the coach got to manage all these guys and all these egos and all this money and all this. And it's just so much to manage. And it just get to a point where it just, it's just like, it's better if we just can figure it out ourselves. If we're not going to sit down, have the conversation and work through it and figure it out, and it's, it's just going to implode. And that's basically what happened. Like, it wasn't nothing serious. Like, nobody stole no money from nobody. Nobody, like, got no fights or nothing. It was just a lot of, like, growing pains. And uh, we just ain't get to, we ain't win a chip. I could dig that because at the end of the day, like e even, and I love the way you just put that whole story. Um, honestly, because I, I never heard the story. Um, Reek never told to me. I never even asked him. I don't think. I just know I remember the BOA days. I remember they had the merch, they had the shirts and all that. And I, I love, like I said, I admire from afar just the way they was moving. Uh, Y'all was moving as a unit, right? Like you said, it was a I Rockefeller, yeah. right? So I always want to know, like, dang, like. What happened? You know what I'm saying? But the way you put it was such a dope way to break it down. Like, it, it makes perfect sense when you say it that way. Nah, for you sure. You know? I, I had I had a long I had a long time to think about that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did. Definitely did. And it's like, man, ain't no hard feelings. That's just some, some way that's yeah. not a cookie crumble. Now, let me tell you. Let me ask you, though. With everything ending the way it did, during the time... When it was rocking and rolling, y'all know some labels had to want to sign you. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, I think like RCA wanted to sign me. We was talking uh, about that. I think our whole label was, I think Atlantic or Interscope, yeah. Def Jam. Def Jam wanted to sign the whole BOA collectively, and then uh, I think Ross offered us, uh, offered me a deal to MMG at the time mm -hmm. when Wale was over there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it. I I'd have been in a couple offices, so I I didn't have some offers on the table. It just we just ain't never. What was wrong with the office? Um. Well, the BOA offer nothing was wrong with that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we should have took that one. <laughs> um, the MMG like it was just too many Wale comparisons, and we just ain't want to like go on the same footsteps as Wale. Got gotcha. you. The, the one I did want at the time was the RCA one. I think uh, whoever was running 
what, what was that Kid Ink? Remember Kid Ink was yeah. signed and he was having that crazy run? Uh huh. So I was trying to get over there at that time, and I okay. forgot the guy's name, but we were in talks with him, but it, it just never materialized. And that was and Wale was involved with that a lot too. So mm, yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got yeah. I I I, I could dig it. I, yeah. I can understand. Yo, you know it, it sucks because um even saying how like y- y- y'all had a team and it's like man, it's so much going on. Yo, we come from an area where like. Not too many people had the opportunity, Man. so it's nobody even really here to teach us Man. the right way. You know, whereas though, like, and that's what, like, and I'm not faulting nobody. I always say that. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying like, I, it's no way you can fault anybody in the situation because it's like, dog, we just didn't know. We you know, know what I'm saying? I got uh, one of my one of my homies, my man Swin. Um, he tried to get me to start managing people or doing something at one point, probably a few years ago, and I was like, nah, I don't really know how to do it. I don't want to mess it up. And he was just like, man, sometimes the best way to learn is to go out there and mess up. Yeah. And then you'll, he said, yeah, you might take a bad deal the first time. And once you learn that was a bad deal, you'll never take that deal again. And I was like, damn. We don't right. be having nobody who be staying here to teach us like that. Ah, good point. And, and it, it's people here who could teach us who are not artists or not executives and shit like that. But they be wanting to see the artists. Like, just imagine if we had a run like how NWA had and then you spawn a Easy e you spawn a Dr. Dre you spawn a Snoop Dogg you spawn all these people and then you got boom they they grassroots and then they coming up you get DPG you get Eminem you get Bone Thugs and Harmony like you get Kendrick th- yeah and, and that's why I was saying I didn't mean our entertainment industry was new here like just the, the music industry part because yeah. we've been had solid people from D.C. who came and ran through entertainment and did sure. their thing. But as far as the music industry, like, who do you run to? Who do you look to? Who is the person that's signing artists and, like, pumping them out? Like, they got it in Memphis. They got Yo Gotti. Dolph was doing it. They mm. got it in California. Mm. They got it in Atlanta. So So Def was doing it. Then you get the Young Thugs. You get T.I. Like, G, like, everybody. So we don't have nobody. We have Wale, and everybody put a lot on his back. They do. And he tried to do, you know, mess yeah. with this producer, mess with this rapper, mess with this rapper. And at what point, it's just like, ah, it's only me, buddy. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> you know what I'm that, saying? That's real. Like, but if he had somebody who already was 10 years in the game before him, then maybe somebody could have told while in the game and all the bull stuff that go on in the industry because he had to go learn that by itself yeah cause, i mean because we do got a lot of people from the area right but it's sure. crazy i was just talking to uh my mentor here executive over at uh at columbia and in our conversation i was saying to him like man i'm trying to like wiggle my way through this whereas though like i can really start creating some opportunities for more artists in baltimore and DC DMV right mm-hmm. cause I'm like look at we were talking about somebody that got signed and dude that got signed is trash and I'm just like yo this is crazy and then another person that was once signed to Warner kid out of Orlando he had less followers than me at the time and I'm like yo who do these people be knowing where they could just walk them into the, to these people and get these deals and be off and running you know what I'm saying like it's the crazy so I'm like man that's what I'm trying to Wiggle my way through this game to figure out, yo, who do I got to talk to? Because mind you, I got producers. Yeah. I got all the, you know what I'm saying? I got all this, and I'm just trying to be the guy to be like, yo, I can make it happen. Like, I can I can help. I can assist. The DMV got to start championing people. Mm-hmm. Like, as a collective, we got to champion these artists a little more because everybody be a little envy about the next man. That's and, true. Uh, like, you just we like the outside the outside states and stuff can't know about our internal problems ah uh, that's true and they be all over twitter you know what i'm saying oh man we gotta stop them twitter conversations so like that, and I've, I've been guilty of it i never say the person name who i think trash though but man he's trash <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying and so the people who cut the checks and get to come down and cut the checks they like oh they they haven't figured it out yet down there yep because, like you say, it is people who can come down here and take somebody and give him a deal. Yo, that makes so much sense. Now that you say it, like, just a broader perspective. Yo, we got to get off Twitter with these conversations. Yeah, we do. Because it's crazy. You got somebody like my man Gabe from On The Radar will come down here, do his thing, and then shoot back to New York. And then if the DMV conversation come up, it's like, man, no. You know what I'm saying? Like It do be like that, though. 
It's like, Dang. and we got so many artists here. It's just like, how ain't nobody come down and cut check? Even for artists who not as big, because like you said, it's people who be going in with less followers than you, and they go get a deal. It's because somebody really liked them as a person, and they is like, okay, we're gonna spend money. We don't care. We're gonna write it off on our taxes. We're gonna spend a little bit of money on this kid. He might blow up. He might not. But oh well. And, and, and listen, and, and mind <laughs> you, a lot of these kids just need one the experience. Yeah. Or they just need the opportunity. Some of them just need to get out of D.C. or Baltimore for sure. or the D.M.V. for, for sure. a little while. For sure. You know what I'm saying? They really just, man. I got every time I got this crew, that every time I go out of town, they hit my D.M. and say, "Big bro, why you ain't take us?" And I feel bad every time because it's like, dang, like, I can't just take y'all with me, but I know why y'all ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, dog, we just here. We always here. Always. They don't be, and a lot of that, and a lot of that will change their life, too. It'll change their life. Yo, one of the, the, the greatest things of my childhood growing up was the fact that my family traveled. You know what I'm saying? Like, either an aunt was coming to get me or an uncle was coming to get me, and I was on the move somewhere. So by being able to be around different cultures, different people, different nationalities, it made me a more diverse human being. And it made you not even want to be in your hood that long. It's like, well, at I've all. been here too long. Let at me all. go somewhere. Yep. <laughs> hey, you come back with a whole different summer story than some For people. Sure. You know, so that's that's major. Let me ask you, being from the DMV, mm -hmm. what do you think about this free car music? Um, I think I think it's uh, I think it's unique. And I think that that flow that they be using, mm -hmm. where it sound like they be punching in all the time, I feel like one person could take off with it because nobody flow like that. And but they, I think somebody need to take it and make it like not about like killing and spinning and gotcha. talking about your ops and stuff like that. I think KP do a good job of it, but I think he kind of advanced past that DMV flow. He kind of got his own style now, mm -hmm. and uh. But I think it can work for somebody because it ain't no sound out there like that. It ain't. It ain't. I always question. I think with any new sound that we hear, we always question it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we never know if it's going to work. When, um, let's see, what, what's something new that came out? And we was like, we don't know if Shit, that's... when Young Thug came out, we was like, what is this? When Young Thug came <laughs> out, I always thought Young Thug sound like a, a knockoff Lil Wayne, though. Uh, to me, he sounded like a... When he uh, first came out, I could not hear Lil Wayne. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't understand. I couldn't hear Lil Wayne because I could barely understand him. Couldn't understand what he was saying. I So what I always heard, I felt like he took that Lil Wayne flow from that T-Pain record. Uh, uh, can't believe it. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah cause remember that Lil that? Wayne? Yeah. Remember we couldn't understand what Lil Wayne was oh, saying yeah, on that yeah, joint. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. when Tigger was on the radio, he was like, "I love, I love what he's saying. It's fire, but I don't know what he's saying facts, at all." Facts. So that's how Young Thug. So Thug to me at the time was like a great value, Lil Wayne, and then he kept trolling Lil Wayne. So it was just like, oh yeah, he's definitely yeah for sure. But it it, it did end up working. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. With now he got a bunch of little. Young Thug Baby's out here. For sure. And, and he got his own style now. And, and got his own style. Yeah. You know, but I always think about that. Like, whenever new music comes, you know what I'm saying? Like, these new styles, we always, like, wonder, like, if, if it's going to work. Oh, it, it could work. Yeah. I think it just got to be the right the right younger who could uh, kind of teeter the fence on, like, not having it overly free car and kind of, like, you know what I'm saying? KP kind of did it, but like I said, like, he, he don't have that traditional, like, that that free car flow like mm -hmm. they be sounding like they punch every line i'll be like man that drum is crazy and, <laughs> they and sound like they punch yeah. every line and it's a bunch of them you know what i'm saying yeah, which is sure. crazy is that the kids in dc love it they love it they can get they'll get a hundred thousand views from their neighborhood yeah which is crazy which is a good thing too. it is a good yeah, thing it, it is a good like thing. they can really turn into profit and they and that's what they they really be on for real because they be building the audience so fast but they just get stuck and doing the same shit then it just gets stale yeah but like i think i heard uh like babyface ray came here and he pulled up to some hood and he was like listening to the music and he like cut it off and told one of them young it's like yeah y'all nice but y'all don't like talk to the women or nothing oh yeah like y'all don't be talking to the girls like all y'all talk about is killing he was like i mean it's cool but one of the first joints they they let me hear from uh kp was that ty freaking record yeah and i was like oh all right i like this yeah i like his beat selection is pretty good too though 
Oh yeah, he picked he picked them beats. Yeah. I don't know who's clan them, but he picked yeah, them. Yeah, oh, man, <laughs> man, he might just fly he fly under the radar right when now. He, yeah, when he but get, when once he, he gets to that next when he level, get that one that go crazy, they gonna go look at his catalog hey, and be yo, like, oh, they snatching everything. <laughs> but by by that point in time, it's a yeah, speeding ticket. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like you 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 so far gone. Hey, it's a speeding ticket. Nah, for sure. Now talk to me about this new project you got, man. Yes, sir. Everything for sale, man. Like everything we was talking about the whole interview, just. You know, being in this game for a long time, touring, writing music, helping music, helping write music for other artists and things like that. It's just like, man, we done did a lot, man. We ain't never, you know, get no 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 return on our investment. So like, that's now, crazy. Now we just betting on ourselves. Everything been out the muscle with me, bro. Like all been all me out the pocket, all hustle, all muscle. Like who some of the people you worked with, like I was in the studio with. Outside of the Wallet and BOA situation? Um, currency. Like, I've just been down New Orleans, like, really cooking up with Jet Life majority of the time. When I was in L.A., I was working with my man, Fabe, who produced for uh, Brent Fires. Mm. That's my guy. Um, DMV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who else? I hate that D.C. be trying to claim him knowing the law. Cause he's from Columbia, and that's closer to Baltimore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think what I think he be claiming DC more than exactly. Yo, he do, and I, and I think that's crazy though. I think that, but I, I get it. Nah, and he go to the studio in Baltimore. No, man, no, no, Brent. Nah. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, I just been down. Uh, I got to work with Fiend. Who, okay. who used to be with No Limit. He signed to Jet Life. I thought that was dope because I used to listen to him coming up. So that was real dope. And uh, just a lot of local uh, uh, young niggas from around my way who who I really love. And um, I'm, I'm pushing for them to kind of take it further and kind of just, you know, let them know about the mistakes I made and kind of show them, you know, the right from wrong. What mistakes thing. you feel like you made? Like, I felt like sometimes I used to be too humble. Ah. Uh, like, we were really, really on fire, and I was kind of, like, just living in it opposed to, like, running through a wall. And, like, I should have been running through a wall, like, really dragging. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy because... You know what I'm saying? I, yo, I, I'm... Man, that's crazy because I'm, I'm pretty humble. I'm I'm pretty humble. Yeah. Um, I don't run through the wall. Yeah, like I, I don't run nah, through. Nah, sometimes you gotta drink that coffee and yeah. run through a wall. Yo, it's yo, it's some people it works great. And for rub them. people the wrong way. Like, yo, it's yeah. But yo, yo, Flo say it to me a lot. Uh, shout to Flo. Yo, Flo say, man, like yo, you gotta make people uncomfortable. You do. You know what I'm saying? Like they got in in this crate. Like you, you. He's the king of grabbing his nuts. Yeah. Like I'm not. It's just not me. Cause nah. I, I'm too scared that I'm gonna get that kind. Like I'm gonna start acting like that. Yeah. And God gonna take it all away. Yeah. And then it's like I worked all this hard, and now everything that turned on me. Yeah. Like nah, I don't. Want I just, I just, I, I'm a Taurus, bro. I'm like, a Taurus. My birthday is in like five days. And yeah, I, I had a, my birthday is April 29th, and like. Okay, you just made it. Okay, yeah. salute to the Taurus. So like, I be like, I don't even be trying to like get my hopes up for shit. I try uh. to stay like kind of like here all the time. If it happened, it happened. If it don't, it don't. Type shit. So that's a Taurus thing. I feel like I, didn't know that, I, I feel I, like I feel like I've been like that my whole life. Cause I, and then I do I, that, yeah. And then I feel like once I get like angry or to a point, like it'd be hard to turn that shit off. Yeah. So like once I, because I'm stubborn. So they always say that about us, and I, man, I be trying, I be fighting it, I be saying that I be not fighting. True. I, I used yeah. to fight it, but then like the more and more you like, especially when you got a girl, they always uh, uh, oh, call no. you out and let you know. Yep. And you don't be wanting to hear it at the time, but then at you'll all. be sitting there like a, a couple hours later. You be like, you know what? I was not like tripping. Hey, <laughs> hey, dog. Me, me and my girl are getting to a me and my girl are getting to a beef. I don't care how big or small. Yo, I won't talk to her for a week. At least, like I go hard. Like, that's, that's stubbornness. I ain't got nothing to say to you. That's, like that's what? Right. That, that's I a, wish that's you me. would. That's, that's how I, I do. wish you would try to reach out to me. What? Get out of here. I, don't, I, I I be doing that shit too, but I be trying to fix that now because I have to that's fix my that. stubbornness. I yo, when I say I have to fix that, yeah. it would be the smallest thing. It's just like all right, now I ain't talking to you no more. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've done it. Yeah. I've done, yo, one night, that's tour shit. yo, <laughs> one night she we was in a bed and she laughed about something that I didn't think was funny. And I was just like, yo, what's, what's so funny about that? Oh, you think that's funny? Oh, I bet. I turned over, went to sleep. I ain't talked to her for like a week. 
Yeah. Cra- Yo, it's, it's the craziest thing in the world. Hey, you know, that's a that's a tourist trait if I've ever heard it in my life. And that is disgusting. <laughs> like, man, that, that is but crazy. Yeah. But like my girl, my girl, like, she'll put the mirror in my face. And she's been with me a very long time, so she she know me. And th- when somebody know you, it'd be hard to hide. Yeah. <clears throat> so Every little like, and when you know, women are investigators, bro. Like they pay attention to every. I could have put a little small pin mark on my hand, and then like, and and the shield notice it, and I and I, and then like she be like, where it go? Oh, I seen it yesterday. And be like, you seen that? How you see that? It's just like they know everything. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was uh, an extension cord on the on her side of the bed when she first started coming to my crib. It was extension cord. I don't know where that extension cord went, but I promise you, she asked about that extension cord every. So what happened to that extension cord? Oh yeah. I mean, it's been years now. Yeah. She was like, it used to be an extension cord on my side of the bed, and I'm just thinking in my head like, <laughs> dang, I really don't know what happened to the extension cord. And in my head, it's like, yo, did I have a girl over here and she took the extension cord? Like, I don't even know what happened to <laughs> now it. Now you questioning yourself. Now I'm questioning, and now because I remember the extension cord being there, I don't know where it's at at all. I'm telling you, man, they it, make, they make you rethink. Things. It's the scariest thing at all, yo. Craziest thing that happened to you on the road, man. You've been on the road for some years. Craziest. Oh, g- give me a good road story. A good craziest road, road story, story, man. Rick is laughing. Man, I got some crazy road stories, but I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Give it, let, let me go. Let's I'm go. I'll tell you a funny story. Mm-hmm. So I think we was like, I think we like stayed in the city like way longer than we were supposed to. So like, we was told to like go to the bathroom, get all your stuff. We not stopping. We gotta go straight to the city. Now I'm not gonna put this DJ on blast, but like this nigga's stomach was hurting, and on the on the tour bus, you can't take a number two. <laughs> So my man had to hot bag him, hot bag him to shit in the bag, <laughs> throw it out the window. What? Oh my gosh! Hey, bro. When I tell you they was cooking this nigga for twenty four hours straight. Wait, yeah. So you you put the bag in the toilet? Fool, yes. You because you can't take. Yeah. It's, it's just water on the bus, so nobody took a shit on the bus. Yeah. And usually, if somebody had to use the bathroom, we'd stop. But we was like five hours behind. Bus said, "We not stopping. If you got shit, you gotta take a hot bag." We was like a hot bag. Fool had man, that nigga was going through it, bro. Fool had to take, put that shit in that bag, throw that out the window. Nasty. <laughs> ah, my. Just nasty work. But, man, the tour was so, bro, tour is so crazy and so fun. That shit get tiring. So, like, after, like, two weeks, bro, you fighting for your life, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fighting for your life, bro, really, for real. But, yeah, man. Listen, my, my first real tour, I was like, oh, this is what this is like. Oh, Okay. This ain't and mind you, like I'm college tour, so we going different school oh, every other day. Them college tours are the best. You know, what I'm saying different That's school every other day. And mind you, like I'm flying in and out of town, so I can come back and go to my day job. Then I'm going back out. My it's crazy. My body tired. I'm trying. Man, I'm just like, oh, this ain't it. And then the joints where they was like, yo, we got three schools back to back, so you can't fly home. We on a bus just going. I'm like. Yeah, bro. Oh no, this get, is get tiring. This is nuts. That's grueling. That's grueling, bro. It's a grueling process. Like, how do y'all survive? I'm actually starting a a whole uh, series called Behind the Tour. You know, when soon. I was younger, so like I used to be like a little fresher, but I couldn't imagine me going on tour now and doing the shit I was doing back then. I wouldn't make it. Man. I would have a way better routine. I would be working out. I would have like I would be juicing and shit. Like I was doing anything. <laughs> hey, cause we swear we we swear we gonna live forever, don't yeah, we? Yeah, I was doing anything, we, we, bro. Don't we? The, I, the, the shit I was doing probably cut about three years off my life. Man, <laughs> man, listen. Uh, give me four things you can't live without. Oh man, uh, number one is like my family. Mm-hmm. Like I love my family. Uh, you know, just growing up, getting older, I, I appreciated them more and more each day. Uh, number two, money, man. Mm-hmm. We need money to like take care of the people around us and everything. Number three is my weed. Number four, and when I say family, my friends and family. Yeah, is under my friend, yeah, yeah. And number four is music, bro. 
I for love sure. music, bro. I love vinyls. I love cassettes. I love eight tracks. I love old school. I love rock and roll. I love reggae. I love I love music. Music. Who on your playlist right now besides Black Oban? Who on my playlist right now? I've been listening to. I was just listening to a Quimini on the way up here, so I was listening to Outkast. Outkast. I'm a huge Kendrick Lamar fan, so I always listen to like Pimper Butterfly. Oh, so you love this battle that just happened? Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, Kendrick, um, I be listening to some old Dom, uh, some old Wiz. Like I like, I, I really like that blog era when like Wiz and them was cranking. Man, classics. Uh, yeah, all them the, classics. The old, old currency things like that. So. I'll be tapping into the new music, but I just listen to it for like a couple of weeks and then, and then I you go, go back, back to, to your, my... Yeah, because yeah. it, it, it just don't really have the... Yeah. It don't have the stand power. It don't have the same. Uh, nah. So speaking of new music, VA is hot right now. It's Fish Grease. Yeah, for sure. Two of the top 10 records on the Hot 100 yeah, Billboard sure. are owned by, you know, Northern Virginia Man, artists. Woodbridge, too. Woodbridge at that. Shout out to Woodbridge. Yeah. How do you feel about this resurgence? Because now everybody... Man, wh- man you know what? It, VA always been like eclectic and different and can pump out like a different type of artist like with different sounds so I'm not surprised um it just feels like you know like a, a Neptune's vibe all over again it's like fresh it's it's just something we needed you know what I'm saying and to come from like the north the northern part of VA that's like super dope and to be running with Brent and them and all that it just that's hard. it's exciting and it's uh it, it's going um Spawn a lot of new up and coming artists from VA to to go harder. They definitely they they, they VA about to go on a, a run because oh, yeah, now every A and R everybody's about to be digging through. Oh yeah, for the sure. The VA bush is trying to see who down there. I didn't got calls like who else y'all got down there, oh, man. Yeah, get out sure. my face. Oh yeah, for sure. Get get out of my face. I don't. Oh the, we, we yeah we 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 about to pump them out. Yeah, the one dude I ain't gonna lie, he came out. Well, both of them came out of nowhere to me. Personally, I didn't. I nobody had ever told well, the me. Sh- about, the sh- the sh- what's his name? Shibuzi. He was already doing his thing. Yeah, so I end up seeing him on. Uh, I know he was on the maid. Both of them was on the maid list. Yeah, and then uh, shout out to the factory. They had been posting them as well, apparently. And then shout out to Unborrowed, which is also uh, a local like uh, music blog and yeah. and IG page. They started sending me like, "Nah, we've been posting about yeah, this." Yeah. So I was just like, oh, "All right." Well. And Tommy got a join with Brent already. That was already kind of yeah. That was that was like side. a cheat code, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Brent yeah, yeah. is just smart like that. Nah, he Brent really uh he cooked that up. That thing was bubbling in the pot. He cooked that thing out. Yeah, thing. He, he he was smart. That, he thing, was, that thing was ready. Man, the, 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 <laughs> that team was at very intelligent, man. Salute. The water was boiling. Hey, on. salute to those guys. That team was intelligent. Yeah. Look, we're going to get into this Freaky Girls and Crazy Love oh, yeah. right here on Detail Out Radio. Black Cobain, I thank you for being here, my brother. Let the people know where to follow you at. Oh, man, y'all follow me at Black Cobain on Twitter, at Black Cobain on Instagram. My new singles is out. Well, one is out right now, 10 Freaky Girls on iTunes. We're going to put Crazy Love featuring Raheem Devine on there uh. next week. And both of these singles, we pushing these all summer. So make sure y'all follow me, y'all lock in, buy everything for sale on Even Biz. You already know what time it is. All summer long. Y'all heard them, 10 Freaky Girls, Crazy Love. I'm going to get into them right here on Detail All Radio. And we're going to throw one of these joints in rotation. I'm going to see ay, which ay, one ay. y'all like a little better. You know who Cash Cobain is yet? You heard about him? Yes, sir. Okay, you cool with that, him? That, that, that fish shirt? That yeah, fish for shirt. sure. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> what do you think about that sexy drill? You like that sexy drill a little bit? Which one? That sexy drill. It's the That's the style of music that he do. Oh, that's what that's what they call it? Yeah, sexy drill. I like it. Yeah. I, I like the sound, bro. I think I, I, I like what New York doing, man. Yeah. I don't uh, know if they can make any money off of it, though, because it's based off of samples. Yeah. It's all samples. Yeah, man, but I, I just like I like New York being innovative and not like just being a dinosaur. So yeah, you right. I like what the youngest is doing. Up that, there. That's right, that's right, man. Yeah. Shout shout out to the city, Black Cobain. Once again, man, I thank you for being here. Fathom got the juice. You plugged in right here on Detail Our Radio. Let's go. Let's get it. Yes, sir.